Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Houston Zoo. My name's Declan, I am a keeper in the bug house. Uh, today, in honor of Halloween, we're gonna show you some spooky, but not quite scary little friends that we have out. Let's take a look at them. So first up, we have our little vinegaroon. And I say little, but he is actually gonna be our larger of the two. So here, okay, little guy, let's get, okay. So he's just gonna get in my hand this guy, he is going to be a native. You can find him in certain areas of Texas. He is going to be mostly in arid areas. He's mostly going to be found in desert type of environments. And what he actually does is he is going to be hunting small insects that he will actually grab with his little pinchers that we see right here. He'll just basically go out like a scorpion, grab it, and pull it back in and start eating it. Uh, he actually has little feelers that he uses right here to kind of, you know, hunt things down as well as to, you know, feel out, feel the ground around him. And what these guys do during the day normally, they'll actually burrow. So they'll use their big pinchers to actually excavate dirt and basically just move it around how they like it and basically go in there. And then at night they'll come out and be like, okay, let's go hunt for food. And as you can see, they actually have a tail. But what this tail actually is, is more like, think of it like a kind of syringe. And what squirts out at the end is actually going to be what gives them their name. It's going to be acidic acid or vinegar. So they're not going to be dangerous per se, unless you're allergic to vinegar. If you are, best to leave it alone. But in general, you should probably just leave them alone in general, because they don't really want to cause you any problems. They just want to be left alone in their burrows and eating their food. And these guys generally live about seven years. This guy is about five years old, so, you know, he's kind of up there in age, but he will get a little bit bigger. He has maybe another molt or two left, and all bugs molt. Uh, this guy will molt generally once a year, and this is actually his time, so we actually are pretty lucky because normally he'd be burrowed down and just be like, don't bug me, I'm trying to molt. But luckily we found him on the surface today, so we're like, okay, let's take him. And like scorpions and tarantulas, they will actually have their eyes on the top of their head. Uh, unfortunately, this means they don't have very good eyesight, so that actually helps, helps to have the little feelers because they can't really see very well in front of themselves. And do we have any questions from the audience about this little guy? Gotcha. Okay. Okay, and let's put him back and move on to our next little friend. Okay, have fun, little buddy. Okay, the next one we're going to need some gloves on because this guy is a little thorny. Okay, this is going to be a walking stick. These guys are going to be from the island of New Guinea. They are called the New Guinea walking stick and or the thorny devil. And this is actually going to be a male. We can tell that because of the spurs on his back legs. He will use those to fight off predators as well as fight off other males to show dominance towards the females. And here, let me get him out real quick. Okay, little buddy. Okay, let me just get him kind of on my hand real quick so you can get a better look at him. And he's actually going to be full grown, so he won't get any bigger. Uh, he is going to kind of look just like bar tree bark. So put in up against a tree, he's just going to be uh, so Don asked, how large do these get? This guy is actually going to be full grown, but since he's going to be a male, he's going to be the smaller of the species. Uh, females actually get a bit longer, so like maybe from here to about, say, about here. But females we can't bring out because all of them are mated, so all of them have eggs. We don't want to run the risk of accidentally damaging one of their eggs, eggs while we're handling them. And generally, uh, this guy will just kind of just stay put all day. This is usually, you know... What he likes is like, I'm just going to stay here. I don't, I don't, I'm just not going to move. Uh, but actually, we did find out in something interesting recently that one of their favorite foods to eat is going to be ginger. Uh, they will actually just devour ginger, maybe an entire piece of ginger leaf in about a day, just one of these guys. So that's why, thanks to the, all the efforts of the horticulture team here, we are able to feed our large colony. Yeah, and this guy's kind of just looking around. He's trying to get the best uh, angle on everything. And yeah, this is generally his top speed. He can, you know, little go a little bit faster, but generally he doesn't like to. He just likes to kind of stay put. Yeah, and actually a cool thing about a lot of the stick insects is they actually have very good eyesight. They can see us right now. 
and that kind of helps to you know make sure like that they know where they're going and they know where they're putting their feet so they don't fall and yeah and we do have these guys out on exhibit right now uh so they're going to be part of our our kind of our adult group so this guy is actually going to be part of the nursery nursery group and the reason why i have the gloves on is because this guy uh, like their name implies the thorny devil they have spines all along their body so we can actually see them on right there as well as their spurs on their back legs those can, those do hurt a lot i have been uh pricked by them uh once and they did hurt uh so this is just more of a safety precaution and yeah now he is just going to be hanging out on here and we can actually see his face right here uh he can bite technically but it's not going to hurt it's going to be more like just a nibble like what are you doing what are you doing that's because his mouth is designed to eat leaves so yeah he'll eat all kinds of things like ginger rose the occasional red tip leaves and don asks they do rely on camouflage for defense they will actually blend into the bark so if we were to stay to put them in like a brown think of like a brown uh, bark we would it would be very difficult to find them and that's actually one of the best ways that they can basically camouflage that way they won't have to risk using all their spines to defend themselves because unlike a because unlike some animals once they lose uh, their spines generally unless they're a juvenile and can molt new ones they won't be able to regrow them yeah and right now he's kind of just checking out what everything is and he's using his antennas to kind of just feel around like what's going on yeah and do we have any more questions uh for anyone before we put him back and then walter asks are they are they only a oh Oh, are they only active during the day? Uh, so they are actually active both uh, it, during the day and night. It just depends on the situation. So as long as there's food available and they're, they're hungry, they can go for it. Uh, but generally, they're going to be just kind of just stay still for most of the time. Unless if like a situation arises where they have to move, then they will. Uh, like he's doing right now, like he's being handled. So he's like not quite sure what's going on. So he's like, I need to figure out what's going on. Okay, and then we are going to put this little guy back. Okay, mister. Okay, come on. Okay, we're just going to put you back. No, no. Okay, and now we're going to bring out our big girl. This is going to be Carmen. She's going to be our salmon pink bird eater. Okay, she. Okay, let's get a better angle on you, sweetie. Okay, this is going to be, again, this is going to be Carmen. She's going to be our salmon pink bird eater. Okay, sweetie, why? Cool, and as you can see, she is very big. However, fun fact, she is not full grown yet. Uh, she can actually get up to the size of a dinner plate. Uh, and actually, she just uh, molted a few months ago, so she's actually a bit bigger than probably the last time you saw her. Uh, so like uh, all tarantulas, they have the eyes on the top of their head, so they don't have very good eyesight. Uh, however, they make up for that by, by laying uh, webbing on the floor to help kind of feel for that vibration and or just waiting basically for something to pass by right in front of them, and they'll pounce on it. And basically grab them with their giant with their fangs and basically bring it back into her den and eat it and unlike you know spiders and or or weavers tarantulas will actually use their webbing for construction purposes so we actually so she will actually make a little web like a blanket and or a mat and will actually use it to lay down so she'll just make a blanket and then cop a squat and one of her favorite things to eat are actually going to be dubia roaches. So just like in the wild, tarantulas will eat roaches. In fact, some um, tarantulas here, like the Texas brown, uh, one of their f favorite diets is going to be roaches. So if you do see any tarantulas around here, you can, you're can you just going to want to leave them alone because they eat all the roaches that want to enter into your house. And we have a question. Uh, so she is going to be... 
roughly eight years old. I'm not quite sure of the exact age of her. She, I know she's at least eight. Uh, and she can live almost 15 years. So she is actually going to have quite a little bit more to grow if she wants to get up to that dinner plate size. And we can tell that she is female because female tarantulas are going to be have kind of bulkier bodies and shorter legs, while males will actually be have skinnier bodies but longer legs. And actually full grown or fully extended, she's actually going to probably take up both hands. Uh, so we have a question from Dev. Do they actually eat birds? So that's going to be a bit of a misnomer. So when these guys were first discovered, uh, they were found to be eating a dead bird, but they cannot actually kill birds. They are too small for that. However, if they were to run across Ross, a carcass of a dead bird, they would definitely eat it because, you know, why give up free food? And these guys are going to be found in Brazil. They're not going to be found in the Pantanal area. They're going to be found more towards the northeastern Atlantic side. And we can actually see on her back, we can actually see the spinnerets where she actually has her silk come out and what she uses to basically spin her webs. Yeah. Yeah, and again, this is going to be Carmen. She's going to be a salmon pink bird eater. Uh, she is going to be currently off exhibit right now because we're going because she again she just molted so she's not quite ready to go up there. She needs to get a little bit more weight before we can put her out there without you know anything crazy happening. Uh, but does anyone have any more questions before we put her back? Gotcha. Okay, let's put her back. Okay, okay sweetie. Yeah. Okay, sweetie, come on. Yeah. Okay, let's put her back. Say hello to Carmen. And since we have a little bit of extra time, let's bring out our final guest. This little guy is going to be a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Oh, he's going to be right over here. Uh, he is going to be from the island of Madagascar, and they get their name hissers because they will take in air and make a loud hissing noise whenever they're disturbed. Okay, why are you being... There we go. And he... Yeah, and this guy, uh, he's going to be a male. We can tell that because of the two horns right here. And a lot of people see cockroaches and they think, ew, cockroach, but that's actually not true. These guys are actually very good for the environment because they turn up a lot of dirt as well as basically just recycling all the soil, eating all, you know, the decomposing things in the forest and basically recycling all the nutrients. So there's actually only going to be very few uh, species of pest cockroaches. And what we mean by pest cockroaches are cockroaches that enter into your house. Most of them, they just want to be left alone outside and they just generally don't want to mess with humans. So they just want to stay away outside and left alone. So, and if you do see a roach indoors, you can always just capture it and release it back in outside. That way it'll just know like, hey, I shouldn't go in there. Yeah. And this guy, he is going to be a vegetarian. Uh, he mainly eats fruits and vegetables. Uh, they tend to love uh, oranges and the fruity stuff, mostly because they're tropical species. And generally, this guy will be found in colonies. So you can find them, you know, generally together in groups. That's how they like it, because you know strength in numbers. And again, this guy gets his name because he will take air in and will let it out of these little black areas, which will basically make a loud hissing soy noise and will actually disturb um, anything that wants to try and mess with them. And usually he has his head down, so that way, basically, he's surrounded by his exoskeleton, so that way he's protected. But actually, if he were to have his head up, uh, he can actually see all of us right now. So roaches actually do have very good eyesight, uh, mostly because they are mostly active at night. And they prefer, you know, this guy prefers, you know, humid and damp places. Uh, yeah, and actually, fun fact about these guys, they're actually very popular pets in America. Uh, so mostly because these guys are very good at keeping themselves clean. They will actually basically just make 
they will basically just make little piles to for us to clean up, which we greatly appreciate. And these guys actually do very good living together along with the rest of our roaches, such as the Domino's roaches and the giant Brazilian cave cockroaches. But out of every uh, roach that we have here, these guys are going to be the only ones that don't have wings. So all of our other roaches do have wings and can fly, so that's one of the reasons why we cannot bring them out. Uh, so this guy, he's actually going to be full grown, uh, so he's not going to get any bigger. Uh, we do have uh, females. Uh, they tend to get bigger, like most uh, bugs. So females, oh, sorry about that, buddy. So females are actually going to be about yay big compared to this guy. So they actually do get quite a bit bigger, but that's reasonable because they are responsible for having all the little babies. And actually, these guys do something that's very cool in the world of bugs. They actually give what we call pseudo live birth. So what they'll do is they'll basically give birth inside. They'll lay their eggs, they'll lay their egg cases, and then the babies will then be born. So it's something extremely rare and we almost never see it in the bug world. So these guys are definitely unique in that case. And thank you very much for tuning in for this week. Uh, join us next week, uh, next Wednesday for at 11 a.m. for Facebook Live. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.